Good morning, friends. It is a warm and balmy 15 degrees this morning. I found out that a local lake down here uh, has actually stocked uh, on the 26th of January trout. Now, I've never caught any fish from this lake, and I've fished it many times, but they stocked on the 26th. It's been so cold that I'm hoping nobody will go down there and mess around with it. It is also 15 degrees this morning, so the lake could be froze over. I don't know. I also have to drive Booger this morning because my big truck is in the shop being worked on. The bed's full of snow, so I couldn't put my rods back there. I had to put them in a regular cab pickup truck, which is the shortest rods that I own. So they'll fit in here, and I don't end up with a... A hook in my face eye nose liver wherever um so i'm dressed for it i don't even know if booger will start in this kind of weather crossing my fingers so all in all it's probably the best idea i've ever had no it's probably not it's probably the worst idea i've ever had but you know what it's so bad it's gotta work want to go fishing Well, there are things in life that you expect. As cold as it was last night, that's what I expected. That lake is frozen. hole in the ice I'm just kind of jigging through it this is this would be an absolute joke if I caught something like this but the ice is pretty thick I've cast it out onto it a couple times just to see if it'll crack or break and she's pretty pretty stout right at the moment But if, even if I hook, hook anything like this, the ice would probably cut my line like, like a pocket knife. I just thought it would be funny. Hello there, fishermen and ladies. We're back here at good old Wanna Go Fishing headquarters right here at the table of contents. We're not standing out there in the snow and the ice anymore. As you saw, the lake was iced over. Not thick, but thick enough. Now I did manage to get a few holes in the ice and was able to actually jig, like I was ice fishing basically, in about four to seven foot of water. Nothing happened. Uh, there was a few gentlemen down from me that uh, said they had gotten one bite, had been there all morning long, and hadn't caught anything. So, you're not going to catch fish every time. It just doesn't happen. Not every single time. It happens. So basically what it boiled down to was, after I couldn't feel my right hand anymore, my left toe was numb, and dealt with two of the rudest, worst park rangers I have ever dealt with in my life, quite literally, I figured, you know, hey, it might be time to go. You know, if you have a job that deals with the public, maybe you should think about your 
personality traits just a little bit. Not everybody is a criminal. Not everybody is out there illegally. Okay? That's all I'm going to say. So I left anyway. On the way back to Booger, I actually got a phone call from a friend of mine that said, have you seen? Now, I don't know about you, but when somebody starts a conversation off with, hey, how you doing? Have you seen? Well, immediately your interest is piqued. You want to see what, what is it? What are we talking about here? He said that he was in Walmart and he had just walked through the fishing section and saw that Ozark Trail is making their own fishing rods now. Well, yes, my interest was piqued. I wanted to know a little bit about that. Now it is Ozark Trail. I'm not expecting the super high quality of any kind. I'm just thinking, okay, well, that's pretty neat. I know they were making their own fishing reels there for a little bit. So, hey, why not fishing rods? I mean, you can only assume combos will come out too. So I said, no, I did not know that. And I will be checking into that. So when I left the frozen lake, to which now will not be named, I said, you know what? I'm going to Walmart. So I did. I went to Walmart and I got in Walmart, went to the back fishing section and Lord and behold, they have their own fishing rods, Ozark Trail. This is the Ozark Trail OTX. It's an IM7 graphite. This one will take on, it's a five foot six length, takes four to pound, what is it? Four to eight pound test, a lower weight of a 16th to a quarter ounce. And it's a light action which is exactly what I've been looking for for this reel right here. Uh, I have to say, uh, this is a, for Ozar Trail, I was not expecting this. I really wasn't. Uh, this is, the cork itself is, is, is made in, it's got these lines through it. Uh, I think it was called topography. Is that what they're calling it? Let me look here. Topography cork split grip. Graphite skeleton, reel seats, and hook keeper. Hook keeper's way back down here. I mean, I'm looking at this rod trying to find something I don't like. Um, at this point, I mean, it's a one-piece rod. I'm not finding anything I don't like. It has a little weight to it. It's not super heavy. I mean, it's not ugly stick heavy. Um, it's a little heavy, not much. I... Of course, I've dealt with a lot heavier in my time. So, honestly, I'm looking forward to putting this reel on it. So, uh, this rod fell into the $34.99 range. Now, that's the only thing that kind of kind of gets me just a little bit. I mean, it might be a really good rod. I I think think it's just borderline. But I've been noticing, and a lot of you probably have too, that. Fishing equipment has gone up in price, and I've noticed a lot of stuff, specifically Walmart, uh, that have gone up in price. Um, I know the Abu Garcia, the Max Z10 uh, spinning rod, when I bought it, it was $34, $34.99. It's now $41.99. Um, there's things like that that have gone up that I've noticed. A couple things have only gone up a dollar or two, but some things have jumped. Bigger names have jumped 5 to $7 up. Hey, it is what it is, people. But you know, if I'm going to start paying that kind of money in Walmart, I probably might just stay going, you know, Bass Pro Shops and things like that. You still can't beat Walmart, though, when it comes down to certain things like lures and things like that. You can get the Cotton Cardell uh, lures and stuff still in the $3 range. You can get the Ozark Trail stuff. The Cotton Cardell stuff, I do, I like. I think it's made fairly well. And the hooks are definitely, I think, better than the Ozark Trail stuff. But anyway, hey! Sidetracked, took the track to the right. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this reel out here now. I've had one of these before and I, uh, I gifted it to a friend of mine whose name will not be mentioned, John Morse. And um, I liked it, so I got another one. And I wanted to put this one on a very light rod, which I am so glad my friend called me this morning and told me that that existed. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and put this thing together here. Uh, first, I'll show you what this reel is because I, I've actually done a review of this reel before and I bought it because I wanted another one. So basically what it boils down to is this is a PC fin 
ICX5, okay? Very cool reel. It is actually an ice fishing reel, or so they say. I don't know what makes it an ice fishing reel. I do think maybe the shaft here might be a little longer than your normal spinning reel. I'm not positive with that. Don't hold me to that. I'm going to tell you what we got going on here. The bearings, it's a six bearing setup. It is a five, two to one. Uh, let's see. Uh, retrieve per turn is 22.5 inches. Uh, 12 pound test. What does that say? Max drag is 12 pounds. Sorry. Um, basically, I'm not putting braid on this. I've been putting braid on a lot of stuff, but I'm not putting it on this one. I'm going four pound, uh, probably trout magnet on here. And you can put four, 140 yards of four pound mono. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and get this thing put on here, put some line on it. And obviously I'm not going to be fishing with it today, but this was more of a, uh, me telling you, Hey, did you know? Hey, have you seen? So this is my, Hey, have you seen? Or Hey, did you know to you guys? You might want to check it out. It will be this rod right here, but let's go ahead and I'll go through the motions, put this thing together and pop back on in just a minute. Is that fast enough for you? Come right on through there. What we've got, there you go. We have the ICX5 on the Ozark Trail OTX 5'6 light spinning rod. Now, take a look at that the topography cork handle, they call it. Pretty nifty. And that's the only thing I've noticed that looked like they may be skimping slightly is in the cork there. There's a lot of air bubbles and not very well sanded. But on mine, I'm, I feel special because if you take a good look at mine, I hope you can see that. Mine actually has some hieroglyphics or some cave paintings on it, which look very similar to, uh, I don't know, maybe a man laying an egg? I'm not quite sure. Could be aliens. Who knows? But hey, I feel lucky to have had that. It's just strange. Just something I happen to notice. My brain thinks that way. Now, I did have all this line all the way through all these eyelets until I showed you the man laying the egg. And now I've got to feed it back through here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I have been using the Charlie Brewer sliders. I'm going to show you exactly the way that I do it. Um, now this might be something somebody else already does. I don't know, but I started doing it when I really just got tired of, actually I just got tired of my bait getting tore up and I got tired of clipping like on a, let's say an Eagle Claw jig head. Okay. You got the little triangular piece that when you slide the bait on that little triangular piece is what holds the bait on. I usually clip them because they do tear the bait up. A few bites and the fish pushing on that one part and it pushes that little piece into the bait and it tears it. So I started doing things a little bit differently. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that camera over him. That's right, I said him. And show you exactly what it is and how I do it. Not that you care, but maybe you do. And it might be something you want to give a try at some point because I have found that my baits last longer. And they do stay on just as well as, say, using that jig with the little pointy thing that tears the bait. Maybe Eagle Claw's got something going on with the bait companies. Tear those baits up quicker. You'll sell more baits. Something to think about. Anyway, let me get that camera over here. All right, here's what we got. This is what I use. And let me just give you the whole deal here. That is what I've been using. And I use 1 16th ounce. It is kind of my all-purpose size. I, I, I like the way it falls. I like the, the distance that it drops in the time frame. Um, all I do is a Palomar knot on that little guy right there. Yes, this does have the red hook. It is made by Bass Pro Shops. And what I like to do is, and I'm going to show you, since pink and white has become my go-to color on a lot of occasions. Man, look at me shaking. What do you think? I have too much coffee in the morning or something. 
It makes sense if I drank coffee. So let's get that out of there. Now here's how I like to do this. I like when this thing drops as such. I like the tail to be angled down. Okay. So in order for that to happen, tail faces away. And this is something I'm sure you guys, I don't have to tell. I go as such. I bring it just to where it starts to straighten back up again because the Charlie Brewer is a little bit longer bait. Okay. And then I'll pop it out of the body. Now here's the part that's really cool to me is I have been sliding that body up on the shaft of that bait. And that is pretty much how I have been catching all the fish that you have been seeing lately because it doesn't tear that bait up. I may tear it occasionally if they grab the tail it really doesn't pull off very well. I mean, it stays on there pretty good. And it might tear it slightly up here. And I, if anything, I'll end up tearing it, sliding it back up again. But you don't do that very often. I don't do it as often with this jig as I do with a regular jig that has that little point on there that keeps that thing from sliding off there. So that's how I like to run this bait. Are you fascinated now? Are you stunned? Are you on the edge of your seat? Are you actually on the way to the store right now to buy some of these? I would be, but that's me, not you. Anyway. Poof, just like that. We are in the Wanna Go Fishing editing room with my editor and producer Evan back there in the background. So what do you think about that? I mean, what do you think about this video in general? We went from ice fishing to product review to how to, I mean, I, how can you possibly ask for more versatility than that? It's not possible. There's just no way. But either way, give this a shot. I'm giving you right now your, hey, have you heard? This is it right now. This is the Ozark Trail OTX. They make these in a bunch of different sizes. They make one in a bait casting rod. You know, I'm looking at it. I don't see anything wrong with this thing. It's actually a very well-made rod. Even this crazy topography core candle with the man laying the egg. Go get you one. Maybe you'll get the man laying an egg too. PC fin, ICX5 reel. You got a little bit of that trout magnet four pound test. We got the squirt heads, jig heads. We got, yeah, that's what that is. That's the grub right there that I use all the time. The pink and white in the Charlie Brewer go give all that a shot there's absolutely no reason that this shouldn't work out fine and we're going to get a chance here sooner or later when the weather clears up and gives us a chance to get out there in it just cross your fingers so anyway thank you for watching hope you enjoyed this and hey the guy back there in the back behind the other guy no the other guy tap that guy evan you see the guy in the very back He's in the very, yeah, that guy. Tap him on the shoulder and tell him, go fishing. I mean it. Tell him. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.